what up what up y'all it's your girl future sailor card here and i'm coming at y'all with another navy related video so this video is going to be about fitness and pretty much what i did in order to get in shape and get prepared physically for a boot camp so first i need to understand where i started from so i signed my contract in october of 2017 and i leaving next month so i'm leaving in june of 2018 but i didn't really start you know taking my fitness and all that um, seriously until january so you know like the whole new year new me sort of thing you know that was my goal so I, I had two goals actually my goal was to lose weight and to gain upper body strength because when i went to meps for my height they said i was nine pounds over the maximum weight limit so I'm 5'4", and the max weight for a female that's 5'4", is 156. I was 164, 165, 165 when I went to MEPS. So my goal was to get down to even 150, but I haven't really lost a lot of weight. I feel like a lot of my fat in my body turned to muscle. So the only thing that really saved me at MEPS is the taping. They measured my waist, and... I believe for females your waist has to be um, below 35 inches and my waist was 33 inches at MEPS so that was fine but they did recommend me to try to lose the additional 9 pounds. Right now I'm like 158 so I'm not too far off but I'm not too far off you know for the maximum weight for, for the Navy but I still want to be 150 myself but you know it is what it is. But. I really had to focus on getting in shape because you lose weight in boot camp. Well, a lot of people tend to lose weight in boot camp. So as long as I was still able to pass my, my um, tape measurements at, before I go, I would have been fine. But I still wanted to make sure you know I was good. But it was really crucial that I built up my upper body strength because I had none. I pretty much could do like five push-ups or something like I think it was like five or some baby ass number like that and for my age group you have to be able to do I think it was 19 or 20 so that's my first tip figure out what you need to do for your age group so the Navy it breaks it down from 17 to 19 20 to 24 um, Blue 25 to 30 and then 31 to 34 and I, I think it's 35 and above so each age group has a certain amount of push-ups and sit-ups that they need to be able to do in order to just um, be considered satisfactory I think it goes from like satisfactory no I think it goes from like probationary low all the way up to outstanding high and they that's how they used to um, grade you on your PFA so you want to be able to at least be able to be, um, what's it called? Not satisfactory, that's the word. I was going to say stationary for some reason, but it's satisfactory. So I know a lot of you know that for when you first get to boot camp, you have to do a run. And for men, you have to be able to run the mile and a half in under 16 minutes. And for women, you have to be able to run the mile and a half in under 18 minutes. But that is just when you get there. You have to be able to make at least a satisfactory I believe by the time you have your third PFA I believe in boot camp so I'm gonna tell y'all what I did so when I first started running in January I started at about 17 minutes or so 16 17 minutes or so and I felt like I was too high so and when I said I was doing 16 17 minutes like I was dead like about to pass out by the time I finished so I did that for my run. My push-ups was five. I could do a whole five push-ups. And my sit-ups was like 50, I think. I always had like pretty good core muscles. So that wasn't a problem for me. But now, where I'm at right now, I can do my run in under 13 minutes. The fastest I ever did the mile and a half was 12 minutes and 26 seconds, I believe. But normally it's somewhere between 12.40 and 12.50. But it's always under 13 minutes. Excuse me. I can do 30 push-ups. And I can do about 100 or so push um, sit-ups. Or curl-ups. Excuse me. 
and what I did to get to this point was I pretty much did the PFA which is the run sit-ups and push-ups at least three times a week starting in January so that gave me about five months to you know get right and it worked but you know I did take off a few weeks sometimes I didn't do exactly three times a week sometimes it was more sometimes it was less it just really depends on the weather because who really wants to run in the cold like for real and also I joined a gym in February to help increase my upper body strength and I did like a lot of um, lifting weights with um, different um, barbell sets and did different reps and things like that. Chest presses, I'm not really sure what they're called. Hammer curls, I'm not really sure what they're called. But I pretty much just looked up on different arm and upper body workouts on Pinterest. Pretty much just looked them up and did that and modified it to my body, what I could handle, what weights I could handle. And once I figured that was fine, I increased the weights where I increased the reps. So, yeah. My top tips would be to rec to figure out what you need to do to to pass at a, sta at a um, not stationary. I don't know why you want to call it stationary. Figure out what you need to do to pass at a satisfactory level. Don't do just the bare minimum, which is probationary. I think I think your bare minimum should be you know satisfactory, but you should always try to do as much as you can. Like for me, when I'm timing myself doing the, the two minute push ups. I would do as much as I can, take a break, much as I can, take a break, much as I can, take a break. And then it would always come to a point, normally like when I'm at the 1 minute 30 second mark, where I'm just like, oh, you're done, like, can't do no more. Push yourself to complete that full 2 minutes. See how much you can do in that last 30 seconds. Well, that's what I do. See how much I can do in that last 30 seconds, even if it's 4, even if it's 5. All that counts. So definitely, definitely, definitely figure out what you need to do and to pass figure out what you need to do and to practice 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 make it at least three times a week depending on how far you have until you leave for boot camp if you have like a month until you leave for boot camp and you really need to get get going work out more work out four times a week five times a week if you have to but if you do have that you know extended period of time like i did you don't have to work out so hard and so intently because you do want to avoid injury it's no makes no sense trying to you know, overwork yourself and then you get injured and you can't leave when you're supposed to. And now the sun's coming out and fucking up shit. Sorry. But, um, let me see if I can. Uh, sorry, y'all. Um, I'm outside, obviously. Um, well, this video's almost over, anyways. So, yeah, those are my tips. Figure out what you need to do, beat it, excel in it do whatever you need to do practice 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 if you can afford to join a gym or if you know um, any free gyms that are in your area do that as well and also do you know physical activities that's not necessarily working out you know if you play sports in high school you know keep doing that if you don't play sports you know you can try or go on walks and do sports you need to always stay active or well, not, not not every day every second but try to stay as active as possible like my last video at our debt meeting we went on a hike that hike fucking killed me because i'm not used to walking up an incline like you know climbing shit but if that's something that you're interested in you can try that you just need to stay active practice and just get it done so if you guys have any questions or comments about how i am progressing in my fitness goal for joining the military leave them in the comments below if you have your own stories that you want to share you know leave those in the comments below too thanks